Hello, and welcome to another week of Star City Games Legacy Premium Videos. I'm Drew Levin, and this week we have Mono Red Dragon Stompy, uh, also known as Mono Red Sneak Attack, also known as sort of the spiritual inheritor to uh, Tsuyoshi Fujita's Sneaky Go deck from Extended in 2005. So, as you've noticed, as you may notice, uh, I've made some changes to the deck. Uh, the changes that I've made are incorporating some of Fujita's innovations on the attacking and killing someone in one turn with Dragon Tyrant front. Um, Dragon Tyrant, for reference, this fine fellow over here, uh, which deals 12 damage on its own, is not affected by Caracas, and so now we have Blazing Shoal, which pitches all of these cards to kill someone, and we have Gamble instead of Faithless Looting. Uh, gone to the sideboard are the Pyroblasts, and we're keeping the Blood Moons because those are awesome, and the mana base is similarly sweet. So we've got, you know, eight ways to get a creature into play. Cyan is basically a tutor for Dragon Tyrant, and we can still go through Molten Steel Dragon, and we have an Equibolus and a Zodiac Dragon to sort of round the deck out, but against combo decks we can try and wipe out their hand with Nicol Bolas more consistently. So that's our deck, and we are on the draw with a really explosive Seething Song into Through the Breach hand, so we're going to keep this one. Uh, our play is turn one gamble for uh, Dragon Tyrant, and hope that we don't discard it. Our, seeding, our Chrome Mox is actually going to be really bad this game, because we have enough colored mana, and we aren't really going to go off until turn two. Uh, so we're going to gamble for Dragon Tyrant, and hope that we, yeah, just don't discard it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that part's done with. And now our plan is not get hit by a discard spell, which seems unlikely because they just played Badlands, but we can hope. It looks like, okay, well now it looks like, I thought they were on Jund, but it turns out that they're probably on like, yeah, a Life from the Loom strategy. Any Faithless Looting deck in Jund colors is a favorite to be that. So, you're that deck. How likely is it that you just have, like, they would have hemmed us, I think, if they had had anything, and they can't wasteland us if we play Mountain. I'm basically trying to kill them in one turn. Um, and we can't end step through the breach or sneak attack because this thing has a pretty egregious upkeep. And so we're, we need to fire breathe four times as it stands. And we don't have that right now. And losing our only creature seems very far from ideal. So we're just going to play a mountain, pass it back, and hope that we draw Blazing Shoal. Like, there are a bunch of things that we could draw. Blazing Shoal is obviously the best one because we just kill them immediately, but Seeding Song will, I think, actually do it. So this is four, six, eight. Right, Seeding Song is plus two, so one, two, four, six, eight. And then five mana either way. For this is, and then the Chrome Mox will actually come in handy. Chrome Mox plus the last card is nine. So kick off here, Seething Song, go here, Chrome Mox and Printing Sneak Attack, Seething Song again, and so Just pump this one up, and assuming they don't have like Slaughter Pact or something else, 
hit them for exactly 20. Cool. Our opponent's a good sport about it. Uh, so, they're playing Life in the Loam, which means that they're very likely playing Raven's Crime, Liliana, possibly Smallpox. Like, I would put them on Kenan Haas's Jund Depths deck, or something very similar. Uh, so, no blue cards, no real interest in, like, having a hand, right? Like, they've got Faithless Looting and Life in the Loam, like, their plan is to go long. I could see boarding in Pyromancy, but I'm not thrilled by it. Blood Moon is going to be phenomenal against them. And our life total isn't really going to be under attack. So, I don't see any cards that I'm really interested in cutting. Uh, we could, like, get a Pyromancy in there for one of these two cards. So that we can gamble for it. But... I think I'm actually just fine submitting as is, and if it turns out that we'd really like a Pyromancy because we're getting Liliana locked, uh, then we can board that one in for game three. But we're like a fairly consistent combo deck as is, so I think the plan is to just stick to that. Uh, so here we've got a turn two Blood Moon against a deck that is very likely to be very non-basic heavy. They're a three color Life in the Loam deck with presumably a lot of utility lands. So, I would expect them to be very dual and utility heavy. And if we can shut them off from casting and recasting and recasting Life from the Loam, then that's sweet. If they are a Depths stage deck, then so much the better. If we draw a land here, ugh, man, I was going to make so many sweet plans, but then they just had to go and thought seize us. Fortunately, they have to, I think they have to take Seething Song and then we get to cast Blood Moon. One of these two cards is the correct take. If they take Sneak Attack, then we just get to cast Blood Moon, draw a land, and then Seething Song into Molten Steel Dragon. I mean, Sneak Attack is probably like their best take because otherwise we Seething Song into Sneak Attack. Ooh. Okay, so they just can't beat a Blood Moon, which is legit. Like, there are just a lot of cards that are bad for them there. So we're going to go ahead and get this sneak attack on the table. And hit them for five with our Scion of the Earth Dragon. Because we've got another one, and I can't imagine that they have a Surgical Extraction in their deck anywhere. And so next turn, we can just sneak in Scion and turn it into Dragon Tyrant and deal them 12. So if we draw a red source of any sort, we win. So we've got 10 Mountains, 4 Chrome Moxes, four th uh, 3 Seething Songs. Rats. Man. Okay. Well, we're trying live to, like, a much denser part of our deck than if we were, like, hoping to peel a sneak attack effect. Like, this is a situation that I'm fine with. Like, they have to name Scion, I think, because otherwise we just put them on one, they can never use another fetch land, they can never thought seize us. In fairness, thought seizing us is, like, really bad from here on out because we're just going to sneak attack in the best dragon that we can every turn. Yeah. So the therapy are our other scion, which is totally fine. So we've got Molten Steel, and we can pump it nine, eight times. Oh. Well, nice. Oh, they're on one now. So, always a good look. And we've got this Molten Steel Dragon in our hand. 
They can't crack a fetch land. I don't know. They can't do a lot of things. And we are victorious. Cool. So that was sort of, you know, what we were after playing this deck. Uh, I'll be right back.